Hello again, this is Alastair Johnson at Freebird Interiors with another episode of SketchUp for Fitted Furniture Makers. Now if you've been following along with this series, do watch to the end for an update on how we're going to move forward in a slightly different way with the series after this episode. But first we're going to look at materials today, and this will be not such a long episode as some of them have been. Um, and what I'm going to do is share with you some things that I wish I'd known sooner about materials, and I'm going to leave you with links at the bottom in the description to learn more of the basics about them because there are existing videos that will tell you a lot of that. So let's just get started. I'm just going to perspective view. I'm just working in a template here where I've got a ground plane already. So if you're working with materials, which is SketchUp's word for, for color fills, which can also include textures, make sure that your face style is shaded with textures because otherwise you might be wondering why you're not seeing things properly. So to fill something with a material you need to have geometry, it needs to have a face bounded by edges. If you just type keystroke B that will bring up the bucket tool which also triggers the materials pane opening. Now this looks different between Windows and Mac Check the links below for more explanation of that. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole right now. But you will find various materials already preloaded. You can also bring your own ones in. So if you fill something with a material, just select it, click on that surface, and it's filled. That's just looking a little bit odd because it's sitting in the same plane as that existing ground plane. So I'm going to just delete that. And there we've got a filled surface. A lot of this probably isn't new to you if you've been messing around with SketchUp, but if we now create some 3D geometry, so I've just push-pulled that using the P uh, keystroke, triple-clicked that to select the whole thing and then make a group. Here's the first thing that took me a while to understand. So if I now fill that, as a group with the same fill, then the whole thing fills. If I go into that and fill a particular surface with a fill, go back outside of it and choose a different color to fill the whole thing, then everything but that surface that I filled within the group will change. And it's important to understand what's going on here. When you draw something, any geometry, and a surface is created, that is filled with the default material. Which, if you just go here to Colors in Model, this one at the top left is the default material. So it has, by default, one side is just white, although it may be shaded due to the shadow settings. And the other side is that funny colour. Do you know, I'm a bit colourblind, and I see it as sort of greyish, but I think it's slightly purpley, so I'm told. Uh, so that is a default material, and I didn't for a long time understand the significance of the default material. What the default material means is if that is what a surface is filled with, and it's inside a group, then it will follow whatever fill is applied to the whole group, the whole container. If a surface within the group is filled with anything other than the default material, then that material will be locked into the surface. Now, this helps to explain texture editing. So when you have a material that also has a texture in it, because a material can just be a color, or it can have a texture as well, both called materials. You can right click on that and this comes up texture and position. This gives you a load of tools to precisely orient that texture on your surface. You can skew it, you can rotate it and that also serves as the scaling tool so that's very useful to know if you want to make the texture more realistic in size. And you can 
yeah, sort of skew it a different way there. It's often a cause of confusion when you've filled a group and you perhaps don't like the orientation of that texture or you want to change the scale. So you double click into the group to open it. You right click and you think, what's going on? Where's the texture editing feature? Because it's just not there. And you can be tearing your hair out with this. The reason is, what we're looking at here is the default fill. And it only has this sort of laminate wood effect because the outer container has had that applied. So in that circumstance, you don't get the option to make those edits to the texture. I can do to this one on the top because that has been filled onto that face directly. So I've right clicked and there I've got my texture editing controls. One more thing that it's helpful to understand about textures is when something is filled with a certain texture, that is referencing a texture in the library. And if you change that texture in the library, it will change all those ones that have been filled in that way. So let's just fill the end of this with that other texture. I could select it from here, colors in the model, and fill it. Another way to have done that would be I could, I could go to the texture over here, press its command on Apple. It, I think, is Alt on Windows, and you get this dropper, so I can select it from there. That means that's the color I'm going to then fill, and I can fill with the bucket. What I've actually done there is, is filled these default colors there, and I've, I've filled that one on the face there. Um, that's not too relevant to what I'm about to show you, um, but just clarifying that. So if I go now to this texture, I've double clicked on it. It does work slightly differently on Windows. Have a look at the links below. I can then edit that texture. So I could, for example, make it more transparent, and that is changing it wherever that fill exists. I can also change the color of it. And so this is something I hadn't realized for some time when I was messing around with SketchUp. You can have a texture loaded, which does bring a color with it. That can be a JPEG image or something that you bring in. But SketchUp will allow you to change the color, but keep that texture as a sort of overlay onto that color. And you can also then go ahead and just overwrite it all together by loading a completely different texture. So there's an oak one that I brought in. So it just helps to understand that, that when you filled something with a material, it is referencing the library and it's not, it's not just a standalone fill on that part. You can do a global change to anything with that fill. And that can be useful to make an instant change across, for example, a whole kitchen. You might want to see what it looks like to change the door color on all the doors. So I think I'll leave this at that. I hope that was helpful. Do check the links below for more information. And I said I'd update you on how we're going to go forward. The future SketchUp videos on the public YouTube channel are going to be more bite size. Um, the stuff about cut listing and more aimed at the business side of fitted furniture making will now move to the buy me a coffee site and that's because i've been getting a lot fewer views on the, the sketchup videos on the public site which damages the whole um, positioning of the youtube channel and Due to the coronavirus situation that we're in as I record this today, um, my business is in a position where I can't afford the time to, to do this sort of more time consuming video for free anymore, sadly. Um, so I do feel, as others have done before who have tried this sort of thing online, um, I need to move the, the valuable material that people have been asking me for behind that, that um, paywall of the Buy Me A Coffee site which is a very low monthly membership currently, 
and you get a lot for that. Um, so there's a multi-part series on building a detailed project, fitted furniture project, and various other membership benefits that you get if you become a member, including the Alcove's construction guide, which you get as a free download, which looks like this, all my formulas for how I build alcoves um, for free as part of your membership. There's various other downloads like that, free videos, free podcast segments, and a lot of other extras. So do consider that. And if you're looking for the more detailed content going forward in, in this series, then you will in future find it there. Uh, at the moment, I'm got, not going to make any promises about the schedule when that comes out um, because of the pressured situation that we're in due to coronavirus right now. So I, um, I hope you understand, and I will continue to put bits and bobs out there on the, uh, the third Saturday of each month, um, which I hope will still be useful and free for you about SketchUp. Okay, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.